Hey there, I'm Randy Zimnak, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about how to deal with an oddball house. What's an oddball house? Well, an oddball house could be a house that's maybe a 5,000 square foot property, and all around it are only 1,200 square foot homes. That's an oddball house, right? That house does not belong there, right? You don't want to be that house. Or in this situation that uh, this story is going to be told is a two unit property in an area where there are no two units. That's an oddball house, right? So here's the story how this took place. So one of uh, my investor clients called me up, asked me to take a look at this property that he's been trying to sell. Right, it's here in San Diego, in uh, Santee, and uh, so I, I took took a look at the property. I analyzed it with him, and realized that man, we we have an oddball house on our hands. So, so then I'm thinking, okay, my my mind uh, as the agent now in this situation that is going to potentially take over the sale here and step in to help him because he hasn't had any activity really, no offers, so he's trying to figure it out. What do we do? How do we, you know, how do we create momentum here again of activity? But since I realized, of course, well, it's an oddball house, uh, I realized that it wasn't really, the oddness of it wasn't really addressed correctly, I guess, in the marketing. So in this situation, since it was a two family property and in the mile radius, there are no two unit properties. So since he's got technically a single family in the front and a detached another unit which was a uh, one bedroom apartment basically in the back well he uh, obviously wanted more money for this property now than what a single families in the area were selling for right uh, I would too right because I'm like well if single families are selling for 550 well how much more value can I get for this back unit right because there is a value for that and I agreed uh, with this investor, of course. However, as I looked at comparables, there were no two units being sold, which meant that most of the sales in the area in this particular situation were in the 500s. And we were trying to get 700 dollars to $750,000 for this property. There is no sale for that amount in this area. So I'm trying to put myself in the buyer's shoes that is walking through this area and through this house and they're looking at comps and they're like wait a minute how am i going to pay seven hundred thousand dollars for this property or 750 even when they don't even see that and then the agent that is maybe helping that buyer is saying the same thing well i can't find any comps for you to support the the purchase price that we're considering or what the seller is asking for here so what we ended up doing i advised my client here is like listen you need to order an appraisal so let's get a third party company, an appraiser, to come in here, let's give them this homework assignment, right? Since uh, they're the professional, pay for it, it's gonna be worth your investment, and let the appraiser do their thing. They know what to do in this situation. And I already know from experience that an appraiser, when they deal with an oddball house, what they end up doing, they have the right to go outside of the one mile radius to find comparable properties. So in this situation, this appraiser did exactly that. He went and found two unit properties in other uh, similar areas, like, uh, like kind areas uh, in San Diego that had two units on the, on the lot. And he used those to justify the value for this house. And the value did come in at $746,000 on this house. So that's good. So now we're like, okay, so now, we, we have proven the value. We had a professional actually give us a report, the appraisal in the situation, that states the facts. I even asked the appraiser to give me a rental schedule for that back unit and for the front unit. Because I'm thinking, who could be my buyer for this house? Well, a potential buyer could be an investor that might be looking to buy this um, unique oddball house and, and, and rent it out, right? Another buyer could be a family member that wants to live in a front unit and have another family member live in the back. 
uh, which is attractive because they don't even share walls, right? Uh, but they live on the same property, uh, on the same lot. Another uh, buyer could be a family that wants to live in the front and rent the back, which will help with the rental, uh, with the mortgage payment for the owner, right? So we have, we have three potential buyers here. So if we know that, two of those scenarios, they want to know what is the potential rent income that could be brought, right? So I got rental schedules uh, that the appraiser also gave us. So we paid a little extra for that. And now I had, okay, for the back unit, the projected rental income based on these rental comps is this. For the front unit, the projected rental income uh, based on the comps <coughs> is this. So again, now I had three separate reports. I had a report of the value of the whole property. I had a report for the back unit for the rental income per month. And then I had a report for the front unit of the rental income as well. Then what we did, we loaded everything in the MLS under uh, attachments. We wrote what was attached in the confidential remarks. This is the section where an agent talks to an agent on the MLS. Only agents see that information. So I, I inputted all the details, said, hey, check out the attachments. You will find the appraisal and the rental schedules for the two units. And then I took the extra step and I put it in a binder. So I put all those things in a binder and I left them at the property as well. So my goal here is to make it very, very easy for the agents that are working with buyers looking at our property to be able to get this information basically to discover this information, right? And educate them on what is the real value of this house knowing that this is an oddball, right? And that's exactly what we did. So what we found once we listed the property with the strategy and focused all of our marketing around all these benefits, right? So it's no longer we have an oddball. No, we have an amazing house and, and with all of the marketing talked about all the positive things of this amazing property, right? And we spoke directly to our buyers that would even consider this house, right? Uh, which I named earlier. So here is how it all kind of played out. So now if the agents are going and showing this property and they, if, that, if they have the facts, they show the buyer like, oh, by the way, oh, here's the appraisal. Oh, by the way, here, they have all the information in their hands to talk to their buyer and then they educate the buyer. And then the buyer is now educated and they're like, wow, okay, this makes a lot of sense. So this made actually the process of getting activity in this property pretty easy and the exposure uh, was pretty massive. We had a lot of showings and we are actually in contract now and we're selling the house in the 700s, believe it or not, where there is, again, there is the high, we're probably going to, well, not probably, we will be the highest sale within the last years within the mile radius of this property, which is, again, which is going to be unique. However, it's justifiable, right? Because we have the facts. It's not just theory. It's not just me making it up and it's not just my opinion anymore. We have professionals giving us the opinion, which has a lot of weight, right? So the takeaway here is when you have an oddball property, you need to gather facts, right? And hire the professionals that will actually provide you these reports. So you, if you're the agent in this situation, or if you're the, the seller of this type of a property, you don't have to try to explain it verbally and say like, oh yeah, well here, here's why the, this is worth X. No, let the facts speak for you, right? And then it becomes much easier to actually get the buyer to submit an offer at a price that you're looking for. And that's how we create a win-win.